So what's an essential work function? Oh, we're not going to talk about job descriptions. We're going to talk about essential work functions. Have you heard of those? I am amazed at the number of people that I come into contact with who are involved in the human resource role and they have never heard the concept of central work function. My name is Pandy Pridemore. I'm an HR consultant here in the Cincinnati market and you're listening to the human resource. And we want to tackle those topics well that nobody else is doing. I guess there's no other way of saying it. When was the last time you you actually saw or or was reviewing your central work functions for the different positions and roles that you have in your in your uh, your business? Essential work functions are actually considered the fundamental and crucial to job duties performed in a position. Okay, so there's not a single role or a single job that doesn't have essential work functions associated with them. The CEO does, the janitor does, the the truck driver, everyone, everyone. And they're established based on the work performance rather than the capabilities of an individual. So when we talk about essential work functions, we're actually talking about the lowest level, the most fundamental aspects of a job. Job descriptions are great. People who work with me hear the term success factors. And those are the general terms. There, you must have organizational skills. You must have great interpersonal skills. But an essential work function goes so much lower. And, and if you're at all associated with workers' compensation, if you are having anything to do with um, accommodations, under the Americans with Disabilities Act and determining whether we can um, alter or adjust or um, make concessions in certain positions, say with restrictions, um, you're actually essentially talking about essential work functions. And And a business that's ignoring that is actually kind of setting themselves up for a lot of traps and a lot of of, of, uh, hurdles when it comes to truly helping an employee understand what is needed. Now, what's so interesting is coming out of the pandemic, everybody knows that remote work is a huge, huge topic. People realize now that they all, all along could have been working from home. Now, it doesn't mean that management likes that. It doesn't mean that it's the way it should be. But a lot of people are challenging the in-office presence to work from home. And one of the first things I challenge my business owners with is, well, tell me about the essential work functions. Does this individual need to be in the building as an essential function of that role? On the flip side, when we have individuals who go out on work-related medical conditions, even those that are going on out for non-work-related medical issues, when they want to come back, and our question is, well, do you have restrictions? Or, let me back up. If you're not asking, <laughs> are there any restrictions, do that for me. Do, do that for me. Before anybody comes back after our medical condition, always ask. So... Are you returning to normal duties or are you coming back with restrictions? When you ask somebody if they're coming back to normal duties, how do you know what those are? How is the employee supposed to know what those are? And even a bigger question, how is the doctor supposed to know what those are? And that's where the essential work function comes in. I had an IT company who uh, had an individual, and it was one of their directors, who actually broke his arm. And he wanted to come back to work. Or actually, he just wanted to work from home even while he was on workers' comp. But I backed him all up and said, well, 
what are the essential work functions for his job? And they looked at me and said, well, you know, I mean, he's, he's just an IT guy. I said, well, but he broke his arm. Can he type? Well, no, he can't type. Not as fast as he used to, but he has two eyes and one hand, five fingers. And guess what? The technology on the computer um, allows for dictation. So maybe two hands and 10 fingers isn't the use of, excuse me, the use of two hands and 10 fingers isn't an essential work function. And they, they started to process, oh, you know what? Okay, uh, he can work. And that's, that's really what I want to talk about today is have you really taken a good look at some of your positions? In fact, all the positions of your company, but start with the most fundamental and the most essential. Have you really looked about what is required to do those positions. And here's what you should, here's what you should think about. Those essential work functions should be established at the very beginning. At, at, when, when you create a role, that's when you should start thinking about what do we really, really need in this role for this individual or any individual to be successful and, and um, appropriate. Do it, take an, take an assessment of those essential work functions when the position becomes vacant. And then prior to interviewing candidates, you should always think about the essential work functions because, hey, if you are uh, un, uh, obligated under the Americans with Disabilities Act, you need to be aware of what accommodations you may have to offer a, a particular candidate coming forward. I mean, think about it. If the individual doesn't need two legs and doesn't need to be running up and down the hallway, um, somebody in a wheelchair might very well be appropriate for that position. Maybe they don't need to be able to speak. Maybe they can just do their, their typing on the, IT, on the computer and um, they don't have to have any verbal skills. Essential work functions talk about all of this in terms of conducting um, an assessment so that the individual can be successful in the position. Back in May of 2021, Washington State's Department, the Office of Financial Management, put out an article, and it, I thought they did a brilliant job with it. And, and it basically is it's an essential functions guide. And they lay all of these little steps, these questions, these challenges out for employers like yourself to walk through these steps and understand the importance of essential work functions and how to identify them. So... One of the things that they say is, when you're identifying them, determine whether the position exists to perform that function. Now, what that means is, if the position requires somebody to speak to, let's say it's a receptionist, and they have to speak to people coming into the building, well, obviously, an essential work function would be verbalizing or speaking, greeting them. They would be on site not remote, and that would be a receptionist. Ask yourself, are there a limited number of employees available who can perform that function? And meaning, if this person has a, is a specialist and their expertise or their knowledge is the only knowledge in the company, that is an essential work function. We need him or that knowledge or her in the building or accessible to our clients or customers. So that knowledge is an essential work function. And thirdly, they say the function is highly specialized and the incumbent is hired for special expertise or ability to perform it. A surgeon, he has to be able to use his hands or be able to use the robotics or she has to be able to diagnose or she has to be able to uh, guide the rest of the surgical team expertise, knowledge, the use of particular uh, parts of our, our anatomy or our senses. Those are all, those all can be considered essential work functions. And it's interesting. Some people will look at me and say, well, I would have thought essential work functions would have been limited to, can they lift 50 pounds? Can they bend at the waist? Well, actually it is. Actually, those, those are essential work functions. And I have a kind of a chart for some of our manual labor 
positions that literally states, I mean, the individual has to be able to stand on their feet for eight hours. They have to be able to lift a hundred pounds and carry it up to 50 yards. I mean, if that's a part of that position, absolutely. It's an essential work function, which brings me to the five questions to determine which functions are essential and to get real specific. Does a function have to be constant? I mean, do they have to be using it all the time? And a really good example that Washington State puts in their paper is firemen. Firemen have to be able to pick you up and carry you out of a building if the need arises. But is he doing that on every fire? No. No, he's not doing it on every, every fire. And if he's unable to fulfill that essential work function, he may not be able to go and fill, fulfill the, the actual role of a firefighter when a call comes in. So it's not something that has to be done on a, on a regular basis. How about um, the question is, are there severe consequences if the position is not required to perform the function? And you know what? It, again, it kind of goes back to, no, they, they ne- don't necessarily have to. Uh, but what about somebody's dual language? What if we hired them because the position requires dual language and all of a sudden you know, they're not able to speak at all. Well, that might be a huge issue. That means that they aren't able to fulfill the essential work functions of that job. Is transferring the function impossible due to a lack of available employees? Well, the example for that would be, it may be an essential work function for a file clerk to answer the telephone if there are only three employees in a busy office and each employee has to perform many different tasks. Go back to the receptionist. Is that an essential work function for her to be on site, welcoming visitors in, even though we've got other people in the office? It would be. Essential work functions, again, can be used for workers' comp. They can be used for the American Disabilities Act. But even more clearly, they're used to help clarify the actual role, what this individual can expect so what if we remove the function fundamentally, would, oh, excuse me, would removing the function fundamentally change the position or eliminate the need for the position? And their example is removing the function of provide guidance and resource to clients from a customer service position would fundamentally alter the job and the question and question the need for it. So essential work functions literally should be evaluated on a regular basis and as with all things, it can change. They can change with the needs of the business. Their last question is, is the function of a primary, oh, excuse me, is the function a primary reason for which the position is established? A really good example of that is a, a, a floating supervisor job, meaning there is no, they are not in any one particular department It exists to provide a substitute when regular supervisors are gone and for multiple shifts. So if that individual can't work all days and all hours, they're not able to meet the essential work functions. Essential work functions are really not that difficult. And the crazy part is, is that they really don't take that long to create. But let me tell you, Once you get them established, it makes it so much easier to explain to somebody when an accommodation can be provided or when we need additional uh, medical certification to return them back to work. Sometimes it even helps us establish whether somebody's really qualified for a job. So think about it. Do you have the essential work functions for all the positions in your company? And how much easier would that make your your job? You've been listening to The Human Resource. And I want to make a shout out to our friends out in Washington State, our listeners out in Phoenix. Thank you for coming for one more show. Listen to us again. 